Welcome back everyone, this is Recon Stewart, and today we're continuing my CDU tutorial of the A10C Iggy navigation system and CDU AAP panels located on the right console of the A10C in Digital Combat Simulator. Uh, I want to start today by just going over the uh, pieces of equipment and what each switch uh, does. So. Let's go over the avionics auxiliary panel first, and that is the console located just below the CDU itself here uh, that I'm outlined with my mouse cursor. So the first thing I want to notice is we've got the CDU power switch, which I'm definitely not going to touch right now. It would give us a big problem. Uh, but it's got two positions on and off, and it, uh, upon starting the mission, which we saw in our last episode, it's how you turn on the CDU and AAP panel in order to get the Iggy navigation systems up and running. And then of course you have the Iggy power switch. Again, I'm not gonna touch it, but that's the on off for the Iggy system. Uh, you've got the page dial select number here, select knob rather, uh, which can be other, which when it's in the other position, you can use any of these function keys, FSKs, system nav waypoint offset and flight point management um, if you go to the position page it will display in the cdu i hope that sun glare is not too bad i hope you guys can see that uh, the position info page or you can go to the steer point which will show your current steer point and its information or you can go to waypoint and show your waypoint and that current information. Uh, the next dial on here is the steer point dial. Uh, can be set to flight plan, mark, or mission. Uh, when it's set in flight plan, uh, it makes all the waypoints in the active flight plan active. And if selected, you can toggle between only the flight, uh, waypoints in your flight plan. You can also select the mark position on the steer point knob, and that will cycle through any mark points that you have uh, within your CDU. Um, and then, of course, you've got the mission, which will let you enter any waypoints and let you view any waypoints uh, in the entire waypoint database. You have the steer toggle. Uh, I'll see if this. Uh, toggle switch here if you left click it will steer backwards if you right click it will steer forwards uh, let's see we're in the flight plan let's go to steer yeah so here I am I am going left click I started at flex I'm going to strike and then Nixon and then back to strike apex and eventually to my landing steer point and this is just the ability to uh, switch steer points. You can also do it if you make HUD your soy and use DMS uh, up and down, DMS short up and down, you can uh, switch between waypoints as well. There's also on the upfront controller uh, the ability to uh, adjust steer points as well, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, let's move on to the CDU. The CDU is this uh, very complicated piece of machinery just uh, above the avionics auxiliary panel. And the CDU is divided into several parts. The first thing that everyone notices is the CDU info page. And the CDU info page is a display screen that does 10 line visual display of 24 characters per line Line one is usually uh, the page label, active flight plan and steer point. Uh, line two is used primarily for enunciations. Lines three through nine are used for the line select keys, which we'll get to in a second. And then the last line, the 10, uh, separated by these square brackets, is the scratch pad where we can enter information. So probably the most important part of this is understanding the line select keys. So you've got lines 3, 5, 7, and 9 
that are divided uh, between four different uh, line select keys. On the left, you've got LSK line select key one, LSK two, LSK three, LSK four. And then on the right, you have right line select key one, right LSK two, right LSK three, right LSK four. And sometimes there's different data that can be selected. If you were to divide the CDU screen down the middle, it'll have different stuff on the right and different stuff on the left. Um, let's see if I can find some examples. Um, so there's a branch key, if I can find one here, which looks like, oh, I can't find it. It looks like, uh, well, maybe that was one. Yeah, here we are. A branch key is an arrow pointing either left or right uh, next to an LSK line. And the branch key indicates uh, that you can move to a different CDU page when pressed. So I can move to the anchor point page or I can move to the waypoint page if I were to press those. Just like so. Uh, then they've got the increment which is defined as a up or down, I'm sorry, excuse me, a plus or minus where you can uh, use the rocker to switch either step between data or enter data on the scratch pad and change uh, this reflective waypoint six, for example, with LSK one here and the plus minus next to six. And you've got the rotary information, which I don't know that I can find at this moment, but it is an arrow up or down, which lets you cycle through specific values when you hit it. And then you've got the data information, which are the square brackets here which allow you to use the scratch pad to enter uh, certain information, certain data, and then use the LSK switches to plug that data from the scratch pad in. And then of course you've got system action. Uh, when this system uh, is depressed, it will actually activate a certain uh, switch. If you might remember from the last episode, we have the align, let me see if I can get there. Uh, between ground, in-flight, and nav, and it's got these little buttons here next to them. That is the system action symbol, and if I hit those buttons, it will change from nav to in-flight, or if, if we were on the ground, nav to ground. And then we get down here to the CDU key. We've got the dim, bright rocker, which may or may not be functioning. It doesn't look like it. Um, we've got the keyboard. A through Z and the numpad 1 through 9 through 0 rather and then um, the rocker switch which lets you page up and down from separate pages or when you have a plus minus symbol in the uh, LSK lines it lets you switch uh, up and down between that which we talked about as the uh, increment decrement system. Now one thing I want to point out, a tip that I use, is I go into my controls and I adjust the CDU panel and I make my numpad keys, both my numpad on my keyboard and the number keys above the uh, QWERTY area, as well as uh, CDU A, B, back I change them all to the regular letters so that I can utilize my keyboard as my scratch pad makes it a lot easier than trying to use the mouse to enter all this stuff in I can just type it in the keyboard real quick a little bit more realism maybe less realism but it certainly makes things easier for me okay we continue on we've got the uh, fault acknowledgement button that's right here by the rocker pad Fault acknowledgement push button causes a certain displayed fault or status enunciations to disappear and signals the system that the fault has been acknowledged. We've got the clear button, which clears out anything we type in the scratch pad so we can start over. We've got the space button that lets me make a space in the scratch pad and continue typing. Um, we've got the blank rocker, which provides a means to step through 
and display in the scratch pad the identifiers in the CU database on the anchor, steer info, waypoint, waypoint info, uh, flight point build, and offset pages. This is this rocker right here. I'll display this a little bit later. And then, of course, we've got the function select keys, which are located underneath the display panel. Uh, system, navigation, waypoint, offset, flight point management, and then previous. And so we'll go over each of those separately. All right, so that is the CDU and the avionics auxiliary panel. Let's jump quickly up to the CDU repeater page, as well as the upfront controller. Let's see if I can get this angled properly so that we can see how you can use the upfront controller uh, the same way that you use the CDU without having to look down. So <clears throat> this is really just a mirror image of what the CDU is capable of down on the right console, but it's up here on your front dash. It's got the uh, Numera Alfred keys here, just like you would have on a phone, one through zero, as well as all the letters. If some of you remember texting when texting was brand new. Uh, you've got your mark point button, uh, which is a repeater of the CDU mark button, and depressing this will create a new mark point in the CDU at the current coordinates of the aircraft. You've got the clear button. Uh, depressing the clear button removes one character from the HUD and CDU scratch pad. Um, so if I hit, and then I can hit clear, and it will delete one letter at a time over here in my scratch pad. And then uh, time hack, depressing the hack button enters the hack mode. Where did it go? Wonder if they did away with that. Oh, here it is. Jeez. The hack button. Uh, depressing the hack button uh, displays the hack time to target value box on the lower right side of the HUD. Um, depressing the hack key again returns the display to real-time mode. Hack time can be adjusted by using the data rocker switch to adjust hack time and depressing the enter key to accept. Uh, of course you've got the space key which is somewhere right here and you've got the altitude alert. Uh, depressing the altitude alert Button displays the current AGL altitude alert value in the HUD. Uh, subsequent depression cycle through MSL altitude alert and MSL ceiling alert. Uh, fourth depression exits this function completely. So let's set uh, altitude alert of 6,000 feet since we are in autopilot and I don't want to crash. So if I type 6,000, well, hold on. Let me hit altitude alert and then I hit 6,000 in my scratch pad and enter. Let's try it as MSL since it can't be maybe AJL. There we go. So we've got a 6,000 foot MSL floor and will give us a 15,000 MSL ceiling. And we'll do an AGL floor of 2,000 perhaps. That'll work. If we get past 2,000 AGL, it'll give us an alert. And that's how you use the altitude alert. And then the UFC operating mode buttons. For instance, letter mode, if we were to hit this, would let me enter letters in the scratch pad. Not as convenient as having it set to your keyboard, of course. All right, clear that out. And then the function mode key, which is very uh, handy, is lets you go using those page knobs for page and steer point, uh, or steer knob rather, and lets you adjust them from up here. So if I wanted to get into the system page, I would hit function and one for system, 
and now here I am in the system page. If I wanted to see the position page, I'd hit function and hack position, and now I'm in the position page. If I wanted to see the uh, offset page, I'd hit function and four for offset. Now I'm in the offset page. Uh, so it just really allows you to maneuver through the CDU without having to look down and to the right. And then of course the numeric mode is default so these numbers will just enter in so I can do coordinates, uh, I can do lat long. And then of course you all use the rocker and select data switches when you're doing your uh, if sick testing bit tests and all of that you use this to navigate that uh, you've got your steer point switch here to allow you to uh, go between steer points from the upfront controller again if you make uh, your HUD your soy you can use your uh, DMS up short and down short uh, to scroll through those as well uh, if you've got your uh, The intensity switch which is right here which shows you the intensity of your HUD so I can change how bright or how dim my HUD is not so useful during the day but very useful at night and then you've got the uh, depression switch here which is located on the right edge of the UFC and uh, it enables the depressible pipper on the HUD to be manually depressed over a range of plus 10 to minus 300 mils reference to a zero sight line which would be useful in uh, unguided bombing most likely or rocket attacks and then of course you have this box here which doesn't have anything in it as of now but when you've got a master caution this will light up and you'll get a alert tone beeping in your ear and you just have to come up here and hit that button and it will cancel the master caution and cancel the alert tone. Okay, that should do it um, for the main three systems that are in the A10C. Again, you've got the upfront controller, you've got the CDU repeater, you've got the CDU itself, and you've got the uh, avionics auxiliary panel down below the CDU. That, uh, those are the four components that we're going to be using today in order to navigate the CDU. But that's a good place to take a break. So join us next time when we continue uh, this CDU tutorial uh, and an in-depth look at the Iggy system of the A10 and how to navigate all that it can do. This is Recon Stewart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.